What is immersive sound? Immersive sound is what we experience in our everyday life. So when we walk on the street or walk in the park, we hear sounds uh, located around us. We can determine their position, their distance, the environment in which they're in. And all this is what we refer to as immersive sound. Here in the audio experience design team at Imperial College London, we work at trying to simulate immersive sound in a virtual environment such as this. So here we have multiple loudspeakers. We have 31 of them and we can position sound sources and simulate as if there was actually a source around us. At the same time, we're using 31 channels while we only have two ears. So what about getting directly to the two ears, maybe with a pair of headphones, and embedding and coding in the signal that we deliver uh, all what our brain needs in order to determine where sound sources are located. But in order to do this, we need to account for individual differences. Everybody has a different hearing system. For example, someone might have a larger or a smaller external part of the ear. Someone might have a larger or a smaller head. Therefore, the two ears might be closer or farther apart. Uh, and also the shoulders and the torso might affect the way we receive sound in 3D and the way sound is altered depending on, again, morphological features of our head and ears. As an example, this is how you would hear with one ear shape and this is how you would hear with another ear shape. So in order to make our virtual immersive sound as realistic as possible and to make people believe that actually there are sources around us that are a person talking uh, behind me or a car moving around me or an helicopter passing about, I need to account for all these differences. So there are two ways we can deal with this problem. The first one is to take into account all these individual differences in our simulation system, so adapting the technology to the person. In this case, we can, for example, acoustically measure our uh, specific filter. For example, we can put two microphones at the entrance of the ear canal and using a system such as this, measure how our head will filter the sound differently depending on where it's coming from. Of course, though, this is an expensive system and this is a time-consuming activity. So we can find actually other ways of doing this using, for example, simpler technologies such as a 3D scanner or a phone to take a picture of our ear. And then thanks to machine learning and artificial intelligence, we can use that picture to derive the filter, the function, the way that our hearing system modifies the sound coming from around us, our acoustic signature. Another way to approach this problem would be for you to adapt to the technology. In past research, it has been shown that we can adapt to uh, altered spatial hearing cues. For example, if I put two tubes at the, in my ear canals, I am virtually making my head larger. Uh, and at the beginning, I wouldn't be able to localize sound sources correctly. But with a little bit of training, my brain and my hearing system is able to adapt to these altered cues and relearn how to localize sources properly. Here at Imperial, we have shown that we can do this also in virtual reality. So for example, we can train someone to use someone else's ears. And we do this using a, a series of very short uh, training tasks. One of them could be, for example, a shooting game. So you see a target and you hear a sound coming from the target and you need to determine the position and shoot. At the beginning, you have both visual and auditory feedback and then slowly the visual feedback disappears. So you don't see the source anymore and you only hear it and you need to rely on your auditory system to determine its position. With this process, with just a few short, I'm talking about 10, 12 minute sessions, we are able to train our hearing system to localize with ears that are not ours. So this is what we do within the Sonicum project, which is an EU funded research that involves several partners around Europe, looking specifically at the matter of personalization of immersive audio, whether adapting the technology to the person or adapting the person to the technology. We can extend this approach beyond virtual reality simulation and beyond the more leisure side of immersive audio. For example, if someone has severely altered hearing conditions, could be due to a hearing loss, but also to using a hearing aid or maybe a cochlear implant. A cochlear implant modifies highly the way we receive sound and the way we, we hear normal, signal, normal signals such as speech or maybe a car coming or, or sound from our everyday life. And at the same time, it affects a lot the way we localize sound sources. People with cochlear implant generally are not able to localize sound sources as well as people with a normal hearing. An example of how a person with a cochlear implant might hear, uh, you can hear that this is particularly distorted. An example of how a person with a cochlear implant might hear, uh, you 
people hearing this is particularly distorted. So one way of uh, improving this situation is obviously to develop better technology that is more suited to one or another specific individual. But the cochlear implant user can also train to use these altered cues more successfully and to extract the information they need, for example, to localize sound sources, to listen to music, or to listen to speech in a noisy environment. So what we're doing is we've developed a series of virtual reality games where the cochlear implant user is immersed in realistic immersive sound environment. For example, a cafe where they need to fulfill an order from a client, or maybe a shooting task where they need to localize a source and shoot, or again, playing music or listening to music. In all these tasks, the spatial aspect of sound is essential. Cochlear implant users need to use both their ears together in order to perform these tasks. And what we're aiming to is not only for them to become better at playing the games, but for them to acquire some perceptual skills that can they be transferred into their real life and improve their quality of life. So this is what we do within the BEARS project, which is funded by NIHR, it's the research arm of NHS. And we are aiming for this technology to be first trialed and then deployed within NHS clinical practice. This is the research we do in the audio experience design team at Imperial College London. You can follow us from our website and learn more about our research. You can visit us and attend some of our demonstrations.